Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival 2024 is here. And our team tried everything at this year's festival, like we always do. Every single dish, the entertainment, the scavenger hunts, all of it. And we are ready to tell you what eats are worth your cash and what tips you need to know for this year's festival. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we are both exhausted and super excited from today's festival and ready to share all of our tips, our surprises, and our best of the best. So the 2024 Epcot Flower and Garden Festival runs from February 28th to May 27th this year. There are over 20 food booths at the festival called Outdoor Kitchens, but there's plenty more to do than just eat around Epcot this spring. This festival is all about, yep, plants. <laughs> Epcot is full of spectacular character topiaries and gorgeous gardens, so many flowers, so please bring your allergy medicine. The Garden Rocks concert series performances are free with Epcot admission and take place at the America Gardens Theater. Show times are 5.30, 6.45, and 8 p.m. Internationally known artists perform Friday through Monday. Local bands take the stage Tuesday through Thursday. Keep an eye out for the Jammin' Gardeners, a festival twist on the long-time running Jammiters performances. There are over 70 character topiaries this year, too. A new New Groot Topiary makes his debut near Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. He's actually playing music from that cassette tape too. Asha, Valentino, and the Wishing Star from Wish are also new this year, right at Epcot's main entrance, as are Coco and Dante in the Mexico Pavilion. So take some time to explore a tropical rainforest garden in the Mexico Pavilion, or head over to the English Tea Garden and Shakespeare Garden in the United Kingdom, or a bamboo garden in China and the Butterfly Garden in World Nature. There is so much to do this year. So the English Tea Garden, by the way, offers complimentary tours. There's a self-guided tour or a 30-minute guided version. Stop by the Tea Caddy in the UK Pavilion for more info. Now, Spike's Pollination Exploration Scavenger Hunt is back this year, and this is a kind of underrated star of the show this year. The map costs $9.99 and comes with a prize, and that prize is a miniature cornhole game that has Disney characters on it. You can get an orange bird cornhole game. It is the most fun. And anyway, if you don't want your cornhole game, can you you please send it to me because I do. Starting March 1st though, a second scavenger hunt, the Extravaganza scavenger hunt, has you hunting for character eggs around World Showcase. If you want to take home a souvenir, you got plenty of options. Look for items including apparel and glassware, kitchenware, magnets, and of course mini mouse ears, all bearing logos of the festival and its attractions. A 2024 collection once again features the orange bird. These include a new orange bird lug bag, which is already so popular that it's limited per transaction. Additionally, 2024 merchandise collections feature characters from Coco, the Butterfly Collection starring Minnie Mouse, and an exclusive collection for Disney World Annual Pass holders featuring Spike the Bee. So there's a ton to do at this year's festival and we've got a fully updated for 2024 ebook to help you plan. This guide is packed with show times, performer lineups, food crawls, tips, hacks, and of course, full color photos and reviews of every single dish at the festival. Our team has been working hard to put this one together for you with the latest and greatest tips we have on hand to help you become the expert, you'll find this and all of our other snack and festival guidebooks over at dfbstore.com. Now don't forget to use code YouTube to get a discount and be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video for some of our best festival tips. But first, the star of the show, our choices for the best food at this year's festival. We are starting with the soy glazed sticky ribs at Trowel and Trellis. The soy glazed sticky ribs with green onions and peanuts are returning to Epcot, coming from a previous food and wine festival, and they're $7. So this is the first time we've seen this dish as part of the Flower and Garden Festival. Yes, I know, we have all of this information in the back of our heads. Like, where did this dish come from? We saw it at Festival of the Arts four years ago, or we saw it at Festival of the Holidays days seven years ago. Disney does tend to do that. They tend to mix and match some of these dishes at their festivals. Anyway, you don't care. So these ribs are so, so good. They were very savory. They were very sticky. You can taste that signature soy flavor and the jalapenos and peppers that topped our dish weren't listed on the menu, but we were happy they were there. Sticky sweet with a bright jalapeno topping. Yes, please. Three words, toasted pretzel bread. You can try it for six bucks. And for the sake of reviewing, we're gonna go ahead and tell you all about this dish, but really all you need to know is that this is cheesy bread and it tastes as good as it sounds. Nope, it's no secret that we love cheese here at DFB. This pretzel bread has a combo of melted shredded cheese and gooey fondue. And there's also a black forest ham in the bread and rest assured the ham is moist and flavorful and savory. To round it all out, we're happy to report that the bread is perfectly baked as well. So meet the chocolate mousse terrarium, which is made with 
matcha crumble and chocolate soil. Not really soil. It's just like crushed up Oreos or whatever. And you can pick it up for $5.50. You are going to get some adorable pictures and your kids are going to love this. But if it sounds familiar, then you deserve a gold star for a great memory because this dessert appears to be an updated version of what was previously the chocolate pudding terrarium. This year, though, we were super pleased with the taste. Of course, the decorations, including the little flower, are adorable, but the matcha crumble on the top was light and subtle. The chocolate filling was creamy and smooth and rich, and it's sweet but not too sweet. So if you're looking for a fun chocolate dish, look no further. So we need to talk about the liquid honey nitro mascarpone cheesecake. This chilled cheesecake comes with fresh honey, granulated honey, honey mead blueberry compote, and it's presented by the National Honey Board. You can get it for $5.25. The first thing we noticed about this dish was the fact that it had a really interesting crystallized thing going on up top, like a crystallized sugar coating. Underneath that, there was the sweet cheesecake, and then at the bottom, you've got the thicker bit of cheesecake that also sort of feels crystallized. I don't know. We love this dish because of all those rich flavors and textures. But again, even with all that honey, it's not too sweet. It's just a hint of that. Don't sleep on the honey glaze cauliflower for five bucks from the Honey Bistro. This is made with honey roasted carrot puree, wild rice pilaf, spring vegetables, honey blistered grapes, and sunflower brittle. You might be wondering how honey and cauliflower work together, but we're here to tell you it's pretty, pretty well. This is a hearty plate of food. So in terms of value, this one is automatically a win. The sunflower brittle added an earthy nuttiness to the overall dish that made it all work. And the honey roasted carrot puree was sweet and savory at the same time. Overall, this was another new hit. The Sope de Chilorio features guajillo pepper braised pork on fried corn shells. And the dish, which costs $8.50 over at Hardin de Fiestas, is complete with black beans, shredded cabbage, crema mexicana, queso fresco, and chives. Lots of flavor going on. Now, prepare for a bean forward dish here. It's nicely spiced without being too spicy, and the cabbage provides a nice crunch. The sope was lightly fried and crunchy while still being soft, and the braised pork had a rich, complex flavor from the peppers, but it wasn't too spicy. It's pretty tender, too. Next up is the new ramen cup at Hanami for $8.50. This is ramen salad shaken in a cup with fresh vegetables, grilled chicken, and dashi broth with chili oil and yuzu. This is not the ramen you ate in college. This is served cold, which is exactly how we think it should be served, and the vegetables are light and bright. We thought the grilled chicken was just fine, but you don't get a lot of it. The dashi broth is savory and very robust. We didn't get much of the chili oil and yuzu flavors, unfortunately. I would have liked a little more chili, but this is exactly what we needed to eat on a hot floor today. Behold the impossible Jamaican beef patty with a spicy papaya syrup over at La Isla Fresca. This costs $6.50, and as you may have guessed, it's a plant-based item at this year's festival. It had a plant-based meat patty instead of loose ground meat. It had a texture similar to that of a meatball, but the non-traditional aspect of this was offset by the great spices. The crust is nice and flaky, and the sauce on top makes this a sweet and spicy dish, but more like a medium spice level. We are thrilled to see this dessert return in 2024. So what makes this treat, the coconut tres leches at La Isla Fresca, especially unique is that it's plant-based. It features a vanilla cake soaked in oat milk, almond milk, and coconut milk with toasted coconut. Try it for just five bucks. The coconut flavor, while certainly present, isn't too overwhelming, though we did find it to be a little more coconutty this year than before. Plus, the cake is super moist, but not to the point of being overly soaked. It was one of our favorite desserts in the entire festival last year, and we think it could become one of your favorites too. Plus, it's part of the Garden Gray's food challenge, so you can have a delicious treat and work your way up to get a prize. Brunch Cot returned to the festival this year. One particular favorite here is the fried cinnamon roll bites, formerly at the Sunshine Griddle booth. These lovely little beauties come with cream cheese frosting and candied bacon, and they are incredible. The filling is generous. So they're loaded with cinnamon and sugar, and the cream cheese icing pairs well with all of the flavors. In the past, we felt that the candied bacon didn't really mix well with the icing, but that didn't bother our reporter this year. The flaky pastry combined with the cinnamon sugar was fantastic. We'd happily order a dozen of these in a heartbeat. Try them for yourself for just five bucks. And there's another favorite at Brunch Cot, that avocado toast. Again, this might sound like a dish you can make or get anywhere, but believe us when we say this one is worth a try. The dish is made with marinated toy box tomatoes on toasted ciabatta, and it is truly delicious and beautiful. We wish that the portion size was bigger for the price, but the avocado is seasoned well, the toppings are wonderful, and the dish is absolutely gorgeous. Plus, those fresh tomatoes add an amazing zing, and this is another one on the Garden Grays challenge for you, so win-win. Get it this year for just six bucks.
If you didn't get an orange bird sipper, did you really go to the flower and garden festival? Really, the drink and sipper combo here at the Citrus Blossom is a great way to get a delicious drink that'll cool you down as you walk around Epcot and a souvenir that'll keep you thinking sunny thoughts all day long. And this is an orange lemon smoothie this year. It's a non-alcoholic smoothie, making it again a good pick for the whole fam. And it's literally like drinking an orange sherbet or a creamsicle in the best way possible. Grab this combo for 15 bucks. Next up is the Beignet Caramelise at Florida Lease. You've had a class classic Mickey beignet. Maybe you've even had beignets covered in special toppings, but now there's another beignet you've got to try. The returning beignet caramelise. This amazing dish is made with a caramelized beignet filled with vanilla cream and glazed with caramel Florida cell. And yes, it's every bit as good as it sounds and looks. This treat is thicker than your typical beignet and the crystallized caramel glaze is incredible. Just be warned that topping can be extra hard and might just chip a tooth. So consider breaking it with your hands or a knife before you bite into this. Still, the risk is worth it because the bread is fluffy and the filling is wonderfully creamy. If you haven't tried this already, add it to your must-get list. You can thank us later. Grab it for $6.50 and sorry about your teeth. Staying at Florida Lease, we've got the La Vie en Rose frozen slush on our list again. This is a returning drink at the France booth and it is one you shouldn't miss. Made with vodka, gray goose orange vodka, Saint-Germain, elderflower liqueur, and white and red cranberry juices. This one is $14.50, making it very pricey, but it's worth it, we think. It's light and sweet, but not overly so, and incredibly refreshing. Seriously, this is an ideal drink for a hot day in Epcot, and its pink color makes it great for photos, too. The returning spicy chicken gumbo at Magnolia Terrace is one you will not want to miss. This is made with chicken and dewy sausage and Ben's original long grain and wild rice at $6.25, and it really surprised us this year. It's not super spicy, but there is definitely a kick here, which we enjoyed, but could see as being a bit too much for some people. The rice was wonderfully chewy, and the chicken was soft. Overall, the flavors were fiery in a great way. Might be a heavy dish on a super hot day, but it did impress us today. The strawberry rhubarb upside down cake at Farmer's Feast is served with creme fraiche whipped cream for $4.75. $4.75! And has been one of our favorites for several festivals now. Luckily this year, we're happy to report this dish is still a festival favorite. I love that we've got rhubarb in here. We don't use rhubarb enough, do we? My grandma used to grow rhubarb and we used to go get it fresh out of the garden and make strawberry rhubarb pies. Anyway, the strawberry and rhubarb topping tasted light and fresh and all while balancing a nice sweetness that complements the fruit. This treat features a pleasant combination of soft, moist, crunchy textures, and we're big fans. We highly recommend it. Give it a try and eat more rhubarb. All right, we are heading into our best of the fest for kids. It's pretty much the same stuff it always is. Fruit Loops shake at Brunch Cot. If you got a kiddo who simply loves Fruit Loops, then Brunch Cot is definitely on your list. It's already on your list anyway for those cinnamon things, right? Anyway, the Fruit Loop shake is a returning favorite here. It's definitely earned the spot. Tastes like drinking cereal milk, but with an even stronger Fruit Loops flavor in a good way. And the cereal on top adds a nice little crunch. It's not overly sweet, and the drink as a whole is just delightful. It's like having breakfast and dessert all at once. And we you don't mind. Get one for the kid in your life or for yourself for five bucks. Also, the Frushi at Hanami makes its way into our best of the fest again. This is an iconic returning dish. I remember when they first had this on the menu at the festival and one that kids and adults can really enjoy. Basically, it's what it sounds like. It's a fruit focused sushi with strawberry, pineapple and lychee wrapped in sweet rice and pink soy wraps served with whipped cream, drizzled raspberry sauce and toasted coconut. Gives you the fun shape of sushi and the adventure of a pink soy wrap and sweet rice and the familiarity of fruit and whipped cream. To us, it tasted just like strawberry milk, fruity, sweet, light, and refreshing. It's a snack that's pretty, it's fun to eat, and it's delicious, and you may get your kid to try something new. Get it for $7.75. Now, while a few plant-based items already made the best of the fest list, there are too many options to leave it at that. So here are a few more for our veggie-inclined friends. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but there were so many plant-based dishes on the festival menus this year. They just really went to town with that. So we wanted to be sure to include a few extras because we really enjoyed them this year. So first is the plant-based buffalo chicken tender poutine at Refreshment Port. So we tried something new here, Epcot, plant-based buffalo chicken. This is a plant-based buffalo chicken bite situation served on top of crispy potato barrels, which are tater tots, with ranch and plant-based blue cheese crumbles. You can get this dish for 10 bucks. So this is one of the best plant-based dishes that the festival has to offer. The potato barrels were super crispy and helped with the texture of the dish, and we also like 
that it came with both ranch and blue cheese crumble. Both of the ranch and blue cheese balanced each other's flavors. To be fair, note that the buffalo sauce was not super spicy, but the ranch helped cool that buffalo flavor off a little bit. And the impossible farmhouse meatball at Trowel and Trellis also made our best of the fest plant based list. This is plated with lentil bread, spinach, marinated vegetables, and creamy herb aioli. It's one of the items available with the garden grays this year, and it costs six bucks. Don't let the impossible name scare you away though. This one is seriously good. The meat is heavily spiced, but not in a bad way. The vegetables here add a nice juicy crunch and the aioli on top provides that earthy addition to the meat. Even the soft lentil bread was a winner for us. Give this a try if you're feeling adventurous. All right, we've made it to our best booth. This year, our best booth of the fest. We only have one. Sometimes several booths share this honor, but we've got one this year and it is Fleur de Lis, the one booth that reigns supreme above all the rest. It's France. Our reporter gave the new dishes like that lemon cake and that fruit compote and the returning treats like the croissant au fromage de chev rave reviews this year. So it's no surprise this booth made the best of the fest list. If you see a long line over in the France pavilion, now you know why. From the strong flavorful goat cheese to the crystallized caramel glaze on that beignet, again, sorry about your teeth, Disney did not disappoint with any of the menu items at this festival booth. We'll be dreaming about that orange duck for days. All right, you've made it to the tips section of this video. Are you ready for tips for this year's Flower and Garden Festival? Sorry, I forgot for a second what festival we were in. So opening day is always the most crowded. If you can, avoid visiting the festival on the weekends too. Keep in mind that the Flower and Garden Festival coincides with spring break. So while the weather is almost perfect, it's going to be busy this time of year. Also, have a plan of attack. When you get to Epcot, don't forget to grab a festival passport as well so you can check show times and more. Our reporters always pack a cafeteria tray so they don't have to worry about juggling all that food and drink as they hunt for somewhere to eat. We recommend everyone do that. It makes things a lot easier and has been known to save a few drinks from disaster. If you want a quick cheat sheet for the fest, we've got our updated map and food checklists. You can grab these for free at disneyfoodblog.com slash flower garden or just scan the QR code. And don't forget, if you want more info, we've got every detail in our 2024 DFV guide to the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival at dfvstore.com. So remember that if you're using the Disney Disney dining plan, you can use your snack credits on many items at the food booths. Just keep an eye out for that little DDP logo since some of these items can be a great deal. Some are over 10 bucks paying cash, so those are an incredible bargain. Now, if you want to guarantee a great seat for those Garden Rocks concerts, dining packages are also available, offering guests the chance to pair breakfast, lunch, or dinner, either a multi-course meal or a full buffet based on location, at a participating Epcot table service restaurant with guaranteed priority seating for an evening show on the same date. Packages start at 50 bucks for adults and $21 per kid. Ackershoe, Spear Garden, Coral Reef, Garden Grill, La Cellier, Rose and Crown, and Spice Road Table all offer advanced dining reservations for these packages. Now, the Disney Dining Plan is accepted at most of these meals, giving you even more bang for your buck since some are still a single table service credit. We'll link the details in the description. A same-day walk-up dining package could be available at Regal Eagle Smokehouse in the American Adventure Pavilion, offering guaranteed seating with a meal at a lower price point, so definitely go check for that. And don't forget to take a ride on Living with the Land in the Land Pavilion to see their festival overlay, including an edible flower garden and other scenes and additions only around through the end of May. If you want to get more in-depth in those greenhouses, this is a great time to book the Behind the Seeds tour, too. This hour-long tour costs just 39 to 45 bucks and takes you into Epcot's greenhouses for a look at how Disney grows all that food. FYI, if you didn't know, they actually do serve that food in restaurants around Disney World, including upstairs at Garden Grill and over at Nomad Lounge and Tiffin's and Animal Kingdom, among others. So the festival official food crawl, the plant-based Garden Grays, is back this year. Guests purchase five to seven designated items at various food booths, receiving a stamp in their festival passport for each item. And then they can get a free lime dollop with lemonade and mango smoothie and a wildflower seed packet at the Pineapple Promenade booth. So that's a wrap on the 2024 Flower and Garden Best of the Fest video. If there's a dish you're curious about that didn't make our Best of the Fest list, we've got full reviews over at DisneyFoodBlog.com of every single booth and every single food item. If you're headed to Disney World soon, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out our free newsletter so you can stay up to date on all the latest Disney Parks news. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. Happy spring. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.